I'd like to welcome everyone to the beautiful campus of Northwest Vista College. My name is Craig Coroneos, and I'll be moderating today's forum with the candidates for San Antonio mayor. Uh, fortunately, the weather cooperated uh, with us, and we have a beautiful day to, to go with this mayor forum, although we were a little concerned with icing uh, this morning. Fortunately, that did not materialize, and come August, uh, we'll all be wishing there were ice uh, out on the roads. Uh, Northwest Vista College was established in 1995, and this year we're celebrating 20 years of creating opportunities for success. NVC is the third largest uh, higher education institution in San Antonio. When we began offering classes in 1995, our enrollment was just 12 students. Today, enrollment exceeds 16,000. During the fall 2014 elections, in fact, NVC's early voting site uh, surpassed UTSA as well as SAC and Palo Alto College, their early voting turnout combined. Um, so I, I want to give a shout out uh, to all of our students and all the people, uh, Project M and others who worked hard to, to register students here on campus and uh, get them out to the polls. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, several people who made today's event possible. Uh, I want to thank uh, Stacy, Todd, and Nathan, uh, the theater staff uh, who uh, put together the, uh, the, the venue um, and uh, all the technical aspects of today's production. Um, I also want to thank the Northwest Vista College Public Relations Department uh, for their help with uh, the publicity and putting together uh, this logo. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our college president, uh, Dr. Rick Bazer. Uh, as well as uh, the Alamo College's Chancellor, uh, Dr. Bruce Leslie, and uh, the Alamo College's Board of Trustees. Um, uh, our thanks for their uh, ongoing support of our democracy. Um, uh, I am an instructor of humanities here uh, at, at Northwest Vista. I'm also a co-advisor of the Student Government Association, and I'm the Alamo College's Democracy Commitment Coordinator. And so uh, that, that is the, the reason I'm here. Uh, a lot of the work that we do, uh, again, uh, educating students uh, about uh, democracy, uh, voting practices, uh, and, uh, and getting those students registered so that they are uh, uh, able to vote. And I know that we have several government classes in here uh, as well, so I want to thank those government instructors who've taken time uh, out of your uh, busy schedule to uh, let students have a first-hand look at uh, politics in San Antonio. Um, I want to briefly go over uh, the rules uh, for today's format. Um, uh, each candidate will give a two-minute opening statement. Then uh, we will ask a single question of all nine candidates who are in attendance today. Uh, that will be the first round of questions. That will be followed by a uh, second round of questions. Uh, and that second round of questions, each candidate will get a unique question. Um, and those questions uh, uh, were actually developed by our students here at Northwest Vista College. And we have several students who actually came up with the questions on hand uh, to ask those questions of the candidates uh, directly. Uh, then we'll end with a two-minute closing statement. Uh, and that should take us right up to about 3.15. Uh, if for some reason, for, for whatever reason, we, we uh, end a, a go over a little bit past 315. Uh, we'll take a brief time out because I know uh, some folks uh, do have classes that begin at 330. We'll let those folks filter out if they have to and then we'll, we'll wind up the debate uh, after that. Um, uh, in terms of how the candidates, uh, the order in which they're going to speak, uh, we used the, the website random.org uh, to develop a, a random uh, number sequence, and each of the candidates then was uh, uh, ordered according to that sequence. Um, uh, so we'll, uh, uh, when I introduce the candidates, uh, the first round of questions will follow the order uh, in which the, the candidates are introduced. Uh, they're, they're, uh, I should say their opening statements will follow the order in which they're introduced. Um, and then for the, the questions, we'll actually go in reverse order, and then we'll go back back to the uh, original order for the closing statements. Uh, again, um, the questions uh, that will be asked today, all of those questions came from Northwest Vista students, uh, primarily government students. Our Student Government Association and our Project DEM student organization then went through all of the questions uh, that were submitted to select the actual questions to be used today. Um, regarding timekeeping, I do have a couple signs up here. Uh, I'll be moderating the debate, um, and uh, uh, when you have 30 seconds left, uh, I'll hold up the yellow sign, sort of like a, a stoplight uh, warning, uh, getting towards the end. Uh, when you're down to about 10 seconds left, I'll pull out the red sign, uh, and then when your time's up, I'll call time. Uh, at that point, you can finish your sentence, uh, and, and we'll let you go for about another 10 seconds, but uh, please don't exceed that. Uh, if a candidate does go significantly uh, past their given time, uh, that time that they go over will be subtracted uh, from their future opportunities to address the audience. 
Um, uh, this uh, uh, forum uh, will be broadcast on the internet. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical glitch. We were hoping to do a live, real-time uh, broadcast, uh, but instead uh, the broadcast will be available about five minutes after the forum is over. It takes a little bit of time for it to, to upload to the server. Uh, but if you check the college's uh, Facebook page, and I know many of you all have smartphones, uh, you will find the link uh, that includes, uh, that, that will get you access to that webcast there. Um, so, uh, enough of that. Uh, let's get the candidates out here, uh, and we'll introduce one at a time. Um, uh, and uh, so, with the first candidate uh, who's introduced, please uh, sit in the, the closest chair here in the row, uh, and then on, uh, so forth and so on, uh, till the end. Um, uh, so, according to the, the, the random website uh, that we use to generate uh, the order, uh, Mr. Tommy Adkinson uh, is, uh, our, will be our first speaker. Yes, sir. Hang on up. Just out, just have a seat for now, and I'll call you in just a minute. Cynthia Cavazos. Gerard Ponce. Alan Reese. Leticia Vandepute. <laughs> Cynthia Brem. <laughs> Paul Martinez. <laughs> and Mike Villarreal. We did invite Mayor Taylor uh, to today's forum. However, uh, today's forum was scheduled before she publicly announced her candidacy, um, and I believe that she has a conflict with uh, City Council today. Uh, I'd also like you all to give a warm welcome uh, to our uh, Project Dem student organization uh, president, uh, and he's also an officer of our student government uh, association, Miguel Castro. Oh. I'm sorry, somehow I, I missed uh, Mr. Raymond Zavala. Okay, so now, uh, Mr. Atkinson, if you'd come up to the podium and uh, uh, give us your two-minute opening statement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, students and uh, faculty, administrators, and uh, UTSA, thank you so much for ho hosting this forum here today. My name is Tommy Adkison, and I am running because, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it is time to get back to basics, have balanced growth, uh, stay-at-home mayor, and, uh, and, and strong neighborhoods. Uh, it did not take a, a home invasion of my mother's home for me to appreciate the strength of neighborhoods and the importance that they play in our lives. I've been an active, involved member of my neighborhood association for many, many years. As a founder of that association, I do think the city would profit from stronger neighborhoods, both north, south, east, and west, as the older communities uh, experience their, uh, their deaths and their movings out and other things. It's important that we uh, that we'd be able to focus on them. But back to basics means uh, instead of just the legacy projects, so much focus on legacy projects, whether it's closing down Main Street or uh, some of the other projects that we find, uh, even uh, San Pedro Creek, the, the, the bigger projects that s sap money from things like uh, the core functions, uh, like fighting crime, uh, safe and sustainable neighborhoods, Flood control, we've got about $2.5 billion in unmet flood control needs. A spot emission experienced a huge flood that put four feet of water into the homes. Huh? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Put four feet of water into the homes of those living around a spot emission because so much development in the other parts of town are overwhelming them. Uh, stray animals, support for local businesses, infrastructure, crime, animal care services, and 
growing our small businesses need to take a front and center role, and then we will be an attractive city, remain an attractive city for all of us. Thank you. Cynthia Cavazos is next. Hi, everybody. My name is Cynthia Galassos, and, and I'm a candidate for um, mayor. Um, I really don't know what to talk to, to, to uh, excuse me, what to talk about, but all I know is that when it regards infrastructure, um, there are many key points that need to be stressed. Now, I'm talking about medical reform for the whole city. Uh, child care, child care is something that I know a lot of y'all students need because y'all already have children. Um, a balanced budget. Our budget really needs to be balanced and it regards not just child care, medical reform, um, the whole basic infrastructure which includes homelessness, um, raising the tax, education, and safety. That's it. Gerard Ponce. Good afternoon. I would like to thank everybody for allowing me to be here today. And I would like to first off by saying that you are the most important people in the city, the voters here in San Antonio. I think that especially you that are young college students um, that are just beginning to get involved in the political system, begin to help and grow the city by helping to like volunteer a few hours here and there. Um, lots of times that's a great benefit to help take you into other jobs. I would like to focus as mayor, one of the main issues I would like to focus for people in college would be to try to um, institute where San Antonio is known, I guess through different countries where we do, um, I guess like a school year abroad where the person can actually go work in their field and try to, um, I guess to learn the other cultures of other people also so they can come back and spread that information, the growth that they um, increased with, uh, I guess, being involved with um, communities abroad. I myself have been involved in over 40 years of community service. I love giving back to the community. I love volunteering, helping people. One of my other focuses will be of helping people with special needs and children. I do that now. And I am so proud whenever I run into somebody who is helping other children or adults with special needs. So that would be a main focus, along with, of course, reviewing the budget here in the city, making sure that our economy is growing in a positive way and not where we end up in debt. I believe the situation with our first responders, the police and firefighters here, have been, is it over? Seconds. Has been a very difficult time for the city, but. I'm not sure how they're gonna get out of that situation, but I believe that we need to work together with them to make sure that the city keeps moving forward. Thank you. Alan Reese. When I look around me, I see people like me, people who are struggling trying to make ends meet. People going back and forth to school, United San Antonio. My priority will be jobs for this city for you and your family. Lots of people on this stage have lots of money. Lots of them. Some of them have six kids, but they wouldn't give you a nickel to save your life. I have traveled to Los Angeles, I have traveled to Kansas City, scouring this country looking for jobs for you because I have retired as a Desert Storm veteran. I was willing to give my life for every single one of you in this room and I will continue to work as a public servant, scouring this country looking high and low for jobs for you. One of the major projects is linking this city to Dallas and to Houston so that you can live here where the cost of living is low and go to Dallas and go to Houston for jobs. I've lived in Dallas. I didn't like the traffic. I've lived in Houston. I didn't like the hurricane. But they have more jobs than these people will give you. 
So I'm telling you right now, I will scour this country high and low looking for jobs for you because as your public servant, I promise you, I will leave no stone unturned until every single college student is able to find a job, pay his mortgage, but everybody on this stage has already retired. They don't care nothing about you. I'm a transplant from Louisiana, and I'm telling you, I'm here to serve the people for the people. USA, United San Antonio, and we can do it, and we can come greater than Dallas, Houston, Chicago, and Los Angeles, because I saw we have better work ethics than they do. And as your mayor, I have rode a bicycle 2,100 miles, and I will ride it 1,000 miles until every person in here has jobs all across this city. Raymond Zavala. Mr. Zavala. Yes, your turn. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us here, all of us. And I'd like to say this. Uh, on behalf of my family and I, I appreciate the honor and the privilege of being invited to this forum. I, for one, want to be your mayor because it's time that we have a great steward of our city's resources. We also need to have someone with common sense who is not going to turn our unique city into a place like Dallas, Houston, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Kansas City, Los Angeles, or Oakland. Enough has been said about how we need skilled labor here. Well, we're not going to get it until we find someone who is willing to work with the businesses and also hold the job seekers accountable. Currently, I'm retired twice and I'm working on my third one. I, I work for a millionaire. He's the one that encouraged me to do this. I can tell you this, we need to help four groups, the senior citizens, the youth, the disabled, and the veterans. Having said that, our seniors are suffering, and sooner or later, everybody on console will be a senior citizen, believe it or not. I never thought I'd see it coming, but it's here. So. Uh, for me, it's about doing the right thing. Do it for me because I would do it for you. I live by that phrase. It's a lifestyle for me. I do a lot of uh, uh, community service. And thank you much for having me here. Thank you. Leticia Van de Pute. Thank you, good afternoon. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here along with all the candidates. And I first want to thank the organizers. A lot of times we're going to see forums, but what you see here is people who are willing to put their name on the ballot. They all have different stories. All of them love San Antonio, and many of them have served in our country's armed forces along with many of you. My name is Leticia Van de Pute, Leticia San Miguel Van de Pute a third generation San Antonian, a pharmacist by professor, a retired now legislator yesterday since your new state legislator, Senator Jose Menendez, was sworn in. I'm a mother of six and a grandmother of six, nearly perfect grandchildren. I want to be mayor and to come back home to bring that type of experience and proven results back to City Hall. You need a city hall that works as hard as the people in this community. One that's effective, one that's efficient, and one that's transparent. I'm so proud I've met people here who are on their second career. Although most of our students here at our community colleges are very young, what you look at here in our need for workforce is you see people who are already retired and coming back. And we know that by 2020, 
65% of all jobs are going to require a post high school something, a training program, a certification, an associate's degree. As mayor, our highest priority would be to make sure that we take care of public safety, the infrastructure of roads and sewer and drainage, but it's workforce and jobs. There is nothing that I won't do so that San Antonio can keep moving forward and we can be a great American city. Thank you so much. Cynthia Brim. Now, I've been told that I'm soft-spoken, so if anybody can't hear me, let me know. I am running for mayor because I represent each one of you. I want to be a voice of the people. I believe that government should represent each one of us in the way that we ask them to represent us. Our city government is not doing that. It is creating ordinances and then passing them down to us to obey. That's not why we elected them. We elected them to represent our needs, and that's what we need. We need leaders that will represent the people, not dictators. This is still a democracy, and there's a lot of corruption in our city. You may not believe that, but that is very true. There's a lot of oppression going on of the people. We can't have that. This is our city, and we need to stand up. We need to fight back. And we need transparency within our budget. We need to find out where those tax dollars are going. And we need to put them where they were dedicated to go. To give you an example of corruption, Judge Nelson just received $1.1 billion for our roads here in San Antonio for improvement. And guess what? That's what he told the state. But when he got his hands on that money, he said, I'm putting in toll roads from I-35 to Bandera, 1604 and 281 going north to Bulverde from 1604 in La Cantera to Bernie. I live out there. It's going to cost me $5,000 a year. We can't afford that. We need leadership, and I'm the one. Paul Martinez. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Martinez, and I am running for mayor of San Antonio. I'm a retired combat veteran of the United States Army, where I had the honor of serving with some of our nation's finest paratroopers and Calvary Division soldiers. I'm uh, very excited to be here tonight. I want to thank Northwest Vista College for inviting us. I mean, the great thing is to see so many young faces here that are getting involved in politics. I have a daughter who's about to graduate from college and another daughter who's about to begin college. I tell them all the time that the reason I'm running for, for mayor of San Antonio is because what we do here, what these people do here, whoever you choose to elect, is going to affect your future. It's going to affect your children's future. I'm glad to see that y'all are getting involved in it. Don't ever lose that passion. Right now, less than 8% of our city votes. For the, in, our, in the last election. And I know why you don't vote. Because when I came home, I saw it. You tell yourselves things like, what difference does it make? And these politicians are all the same. They're all going to do the exact same thing that they want to do anyway. They don't, we don't have a voice. My vote doesn't count. Well, I'm here to change that for you. I'm here to show you what true representation is all about. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. What I am is an independent thinker who, when I was younger, I swore no to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the people that it governs, regardless of their political affiliation. See, I don't have to worry about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or any other party. I'm not afraid to listen to any of you and hear what your ideas are. And definitely, I'm not afraid to cross a party line because I've got no party line across. I'm here to show you what true representation is about. We may agree and we may disagree, but in the end, know this, that I know how to take an emotional step back and vote based upon what we the people want. Because I realize that unlike other politicians, I'm not I, I realize that I'm not elected to represent myself or a special interest group or a political party or a political agenda. I'm elected to represent the 1.5 million people called San Antonio. And so I, do cons I ask that you consider me forward to be your mayor of San Antonio. If you uh, want more information on me, 
If I don't answer all your questions, please see me. You can also go to www.mayorofsanantonio.com and ask me any questions. Mike Villarreal. And Mr. Villarreal, when you uh, complete your opening statement, will you please remain at the, the podium because we're going to go in reverse order uh, for the next two rounds of questions. Certainly. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, students, faculty, organizers of this event. This is a wonderful opportunity to listen to the candidates and, and hear our answers to pressing issues facing our city. I want to tell you a little bit about myself first. Uh, I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I started my college career first at Alamo Colleges at San Antonio College. I was a high school student taking classes at night and then taking classes during the summer before I took the long drive to Texas A&M. I, I studied economics at A&M. Why? Because I felt like the challenges that were facing our city, our community back then were economic in nature. I saw a city that was so focused, singularly focused, on attracting businesses from elsewhere to come here instead of growing our businesses locally. I saw a city and knew many family members who had a hard time making ends meet, even though they had more than one job. And so I studied economics because I wanted to acquire the tools to come back one day and serve my community. After A&M, I landed my first job working for Alan Greenspan at the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, went on to Harvard, earned a master's degree, worked for over a decade as an investment banker serving cities and local governments. Today I am running for mayor because I have a single heartfelt goal, and that is to help make San Antonio become a city of opportunity where our young people who earn a college degree or acquire 21st century skills see this city as the place to launch their career and to start small businesses. Every day that I am in office, I will be focused on that goal because I want, okay, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. In your opinion, what is the most important thing San Antonio has faced within 20, uh, 2015, and how does your experience qualify you to address this issue as mayor? Well, the, the biggest challenge facing the city of San Antonio is the contract negotiations between our first responders, police and fire, and our city government. I will use what I've learned in the legislature, where I served 15 years as a member of the Texas House of Representatives, trying to get different parties, different stakeholders, to focus on what our underlying interests are to resolve this conflict. I believe there is a lot of common ground here. Number one, it's public safety. That is a priority across the city. But number two, another equally important priority is financial sustainability. We need a new contract that attracts the best talent and keeps them here, but is also financially sustainable. It, it is affordable. The money going out for that budget item or any budget item isn't moving out faster from our coffers than the money coming in. And so I, I will focus on restarting conversations if this, if this conflict has not been resolved before the election. I will get parties to focus on what our true underlying interests are. If we can agree to a few fundamental parameters, like the growth of our public safety budget should grow no faster than the growth of our tax revenue, I think we will get, that would be a very important starting point to resolve the negotiations. Thank you. Paul Martinez. Do you want to hear the question again? Or do you want to hear the question again? Sure, okay. Okay. In your opinion, what is the most important thing, issue San Antonio has faced within 2015, 
And how does your experience qualify you to address this issue, this issue as mayor? There is no doubt that public safety is a very important issue and it's, it's affecting San Antonio right now. But let's get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is the taxpayers' wasted dollars being used by city council right now. If we, were to have, if we were to go and look at all the taxpayers' dollars that are being wasted, I guarantee you that solves so many of our problems. I guarantee you that would show us that San Antonio is doing a lot better off than what the city manager is currently <coughs> claiming. And so for me, that is the biggest issue facing San Antonio right now, is the waste of your hardworking tax dollars. That is the issue, bottom line. I have been a mayor before, albeit in Iraq, and I know what it means to work with city council, even though we weren't city council, we were tenant units. I had people that outranked me that were telling me I needed to do X, Y, Z, but I always looked out for the, un for the entire city that I was in charge of. That's what I'm gonna bring to the table as Mayor of San Antonio, is I can make the tough decisions. I can look at a program as a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, change management specialist, and I could actually go in there and say, this is where our money's being wasted. Let's divert these funds. Let's get the people back to, this, to, to the table. Let's get our education system back on track. So that's why, that's, the, that's what I see as being, being the number one issue right now, is our wasted money. Thank you. Cynthia Bram. In your opinion, what is the most important issue San Antonio has faced within 2015, and, and how does your experience qualify you to address this issue as mayor? I love that question. What qualifies me to be mayor is this. According to our federal government, and our state government, city government, you have to be an American citizen, at least 18 years old, live in the city limits, and a registered voter. Anyone can be mayor, even you. That's what qualifies me. Now, with regard to what you said, the biggest issue, I have to echo what Paul said. It is the misuse of our tax dollars. If the monies are going where they're supposed to go, why aren't things improving? I'll give you an example, transportation. Why do we have to live like sardines, traveling down the road every day, playing bumper cars, congestion, everywhere you go, takes an hour to get somewhere. Why does that have to be? Well, when I looked in the budget, they allocated $12.8 million, and then they allocated $65 million for the, for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Seems a little lopsided to me. Secondly, I looked into Ms. Scully's office expenditures for the 17 people she has there. She makes $2,871,574, and she has 16 people working for her. That's $154,000 a person. Nobody makes that kind of money in that office. Where's the money going? Let these have the people. In your opinion, what is the most important issue San Antonio has, is faced with in 2015, and how does your experience qualify you to address this issue as mayor? Our city is a wonderful city. Whether you've been here generations, like our family, or whether you're newly arrived. But right now, the most pressing issue for 2015 is really that cohesiveness, the lack of leadership. What Mike mentioned was one aspect, the inability to get the police and fire contracts done. But if you open the paper, if you look um, on TV, that's one aspect. The inability to have regulations that both ensure public safety and yet open up the technology of what consumers want in rideshare, the Uber Lyft, that's another issue. The charter amendments, the issue with contaminated dirt at the expansion of the convention center, 
So what we see is not one issue. What we see is a lack of leadership. If I know one thing for the last 24 years, I've been really good at looking around the corner and seeing what's coming and working together, putting people in the room, having all sectors represented to stay focused on the challenge, deal with it, and then make it into the opportunity. I know that as mayor, I could do that. We don't have just one issue. We have the lack of leadership. Thank you. Raymond Zavala. In your opinion, what is the most important issue San Antonio is faced with within 2015, and how does your experience qualify you to address this issue as mayor? Thank you. Well, for me, it's a double-edged sword because the, there's a couple of items that are near and dear to my heart. I, for one, have been a federal agent. Also, I'm a graduate of a firefighting school where we were taught no matter how bad the fire is, you're going to go in there and do your job. What happens afterwards doesn't make difference because you're going to, you're going to do your job. For example, the life expectancy of a firefighter is 62 years old. I've already outlived most of them. And we uh, asked them to do for us what we can't do for ourselves, and that's to save our lives and our property. And then we don't want to pay them? No. We don't want to compensate them for their health? No. No amount of money can ever make up for lost health. I know, because I'm, I'm part of that. However, ineffective leadership is a second problem that we have. Someone has to step up and do the right thing. Remember what I said about do, do it for me because I do it for you. It is time for negotiations with the city manager to shut down and for her to move on. Because if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And we need somebody else to take over. Thank you. Alan Reese. In your opinion, what is the most important issue San Antonio is faced with in 2015? And how does, you, how does your experience, experience qualify you to address, address this issue as mayor? Well, there's been a shooting on bus 90. I live in an apartment complex where there's been three shootings, two murders. But as soon as I started running for mayor, the police started showing up. Because it wouldn't be a good for the press that a candidate for mayor is getting shot in his apartment. I sleep with the lights out on the floor. I took a six month lease out. But one thing I can tell you right now is I'm already recruiting one of the toughest police officers as your assistant police chief. His name is Ronnie Coleman from Monroe, Louisiana. He's an eight-time Mr. Olympia. And this guy, Timothy, right here, when that man tells you to get out the car, you are going to get out the car. <laughs> and for the other issue where we're talking about the shooting on the bus, I am probably the only one in this audience that ride the city bus. Even after the shooting, I was on the very next, I didn't get on bus 90, <laughs> but I got on the bus. Now, if these people are not willing to ride your public transportation and they're expecting you to pay their salary, some of you ride the bus. And you should be able to get on the bus like you get in Dallas, and, hey amen, I'm getting on the bus. <laughs> Gerard Ponce. Okay. You know, I'm about helping people and the community, always have been. I believe I mentioned that we, um, that I help and support persons with special needs. I feel that the most important issue this year and has been for years is discrimination and that is discrimination to people with special needs. I have this one young person that I know who's 15 years old. 
He has no arms, and he can't even use the restroom without his mother or brother's assistant, and his, his little brother's only like five years old. But um, people like that, you know, the city should be aware and being able to try to help persons with special needs to be able to have facilities available to, um, for them to use. And I know that not just, you know, like in and the young boys, like in high school, but, you know, here in college, um, they should have, like, um, ways to help persons with special needs, but also throughout the community. So I believe the discrimination against people with special needs is, should be addressed. There should be more of a public awareness. Um, I guess there should be more of a public awareness within the city for persons with special needs. Thank you. Cynthia Cavazos. Hi. Okay. Um, the city right now needs a lot of things. Um, we need to really go into major infrastructure to, to figure out what it is that we need to get done. Um, medical reform is something that we need to change only because we have insurances that we need to pay premiums and all that other good stuff. Child care, we need child care. Child care, we need to make sure that every single parent that's working has child care services. Um, homelessness, we need to make sure that homelessness is out of the system. If we keep that out of the system, then we'll have a cleaner San Antonio. We won't have to worry about disgusting smells, um, literally coming up through our nose and stuff. Um, the tax, educational tax, I think is the only thing that should be raised right now. Um, no other tax should be implemented with, with anything, really. So when it comes to education, everybody has that right to their own education, um, which boils down to a balanced budget. If we have a balanced budget and we appropriate all those dollars that we receive, you know, from y'all's tax dollars and from everything else, the dollars that the city makes, then everything should be balanced and everybody should be able to have their tax, I'm talking about um, home tax and I'm talking about um, business tax, to be leveled to $600 a year. Tommy Atkinson. Thank you. I think that a lot of problems could be solved by the mayor finding a way clear to stay in town. When you lose the mayor to a, uh, uh, a presidential bid or somebody that's seeking to go to Washington, uh, that mayor has got to put some strictures in place that ensure that the voice of the people is heard. And instead of uh, the city manager taking over the role of mayor and council, as well as city manager, the, uh, the mayor has, has, has got to leave an agenda that is uh, that of the people. And that means fire and police can be settled. You need to get a federal mediator in here to give some guidelines to where they ought to be. Uh, you can't negotiate a fire and police contract in the public. You need to in in negotiate it at the negotiating table. When it comes to Uber Lyft, you can't be uh, 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 for something one day and the next day you're not. You've got to be able to keep things in place. You've got a $20 a week council that cannot be worked to death to the point where they're constantly rehashing, regurgitating issues over and over again. And uh, again, back to the basics. Back to the basics. Back to neighborhoods. Get those streets paved. Make sure the streets are drained. Get the curbs installed. Get the stray dogs off the street. Get the codes complied with. And make sure that people can walk their neighborhoods, whether it's rich, middle class, or poor, make it a proud neighborhood. Thank you. All right, thank you candidates. Our next round of questions, and, and we're gonna go in the, uh, the same reverse order uh, that we just went in with these questions. Um, uh, these questions are gonna come from uh, our government students, and the first question is going to come from uh, Kevin, Kevin Effingham. Um, each question will be uh, directed at a particular candidate. So each, each candidate for this round um, will get uh, a unique question. And the first question will be for uh, Mike Villarreal. 
And again, we'll have one and a half, minute, uh, one and a half minutes for each response. Hello. Um, thank you for taking our questions today. Uh, my question for you is, do you have any plans to help the homeless and disabled veterans find homes and jobs? If so, what are they? Hmm. Yes, uh, I do. I think the, this, our city government can accomplish much in this area by being an, an, a partner with organizations, local governments, agencies that already exist. For example, I'm very proud of the work that Haven for Hope is doing in helping some of the homeless population. It's important to note that the homeless population is very, is varied. It's as diverse as the population of people who have homes. And, and so they are accomplishing uh, some of the need and meeting some of the need, but we have other institutions that are doing great work as well. For example, I know Alamo Colleges ha educates the largest population of veterans. They provide wraparound counseling services, help not just in the classroom, but also in career counseling. And that is something that we need to learn from and expand through our other institutions of higher education. Um, we have other examples of uh, effective services for homelessness. Uh, I know Texas A&M San Antonio is very proud of their work in helping not just the students, but their families transition uh, for the, um, during the period when the soldier comes back and is having adjustments and needs mental health services or, or other kind of social needs met, that organization is finding a way of meeting them. Ultimately, the city of San Antonio needs to be a partner with them, and I'm committed to doing just that. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Paul Martinez. And Carl Hanover will be asking this question. Sir, how does your leadership experience translate directly to navigating the partisan shoals of San Antonio city politics. Can you say it one more time, a little bit closer? How does your leadership experience translate directly to navigating the partisan shoals of San Antonio city politics? Carl, that's a great question. You know, for me, a lot of my experience just as a veteran in the United States Army solves a lot of issues for me. We all understand that the role or the position of mayor, city council is nonpartisan within San Antonio. But if you look up here, you can pretty much tell by our beliefs who's the Democrats, who's the Republicans. Like I said, I am a nonpartisan, I have, I'm an independent. I don't care if you're Democrat, I don't care if you're Republican. The only thing that I care about is the fact that you're a human being. When I swore that oath, it was to support and defend the Constitution, the people that it governs regardless of their political affiliation, regardless of their gender, regardless of their color, regardless of their sexual orientation. That's just the way it is. I judge a man or a woman not by the color of their skin or anything else, but by the content of their character. That's what my, that's what my military experience brings you. It brings you. It brings you the ability of a candidate who can take an emotional step back and base things on facts and facts alone. That's, that's what my military experience brings you. That's what I'm gonna bring to you as the mayor of San Antonio, the voice you've all been waiting for, because I will listen to you regardless of who you are. Thank you. The next question is for Cynthia Brim. And Cody Schrader, uh, Schroeder uh, will be asking this question. Hi, Cynthia. I just Hi. wanted to ask, how would you improve, uh, how would you recommend we improve San Antonio's highways to reduce traffic and make the road safer? And what are your thoughts on how we should fund these new improvements? Would you repeat the last part of the question? How would we what? Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on how we should fund improving our roadways? Okay. <clears throat> I'm letting out my secrets now, okay, because I didn't put it on my website. <laughs> One of the first things that I would do is what they've been doing in London, England for 20 years. Something very simple. They take these seven-foot black tarps. Anytime there's an accident, 
They surround the entire thing. Why? It gets rid of gawking and traffic goes. It's proven to be effective. They've been doing this for 20 years. Why, we, why haven't we done that here? The second thing that I would do is I would put in an ordinance that all trucks, trailers, fifth wheels, right lane only. That way we can get through. Those would be the two big things that would alleviate a lot of the traffic. And then I'd also allocate money to go towards improving the roadway to where it widens and heightens. People voted out the rail system and they voted out the toll roads. So we can't do that because we're doing the will of the people, right? So that's what I would do to improve transportation. Did I answer all your questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Thank you. The next question is for Leticia Vandepute. And Amanda Gomez will be asking the question. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Leticia. Um, are we wasting our taxpayer money on pre-K for San Antonio, or are we utilizing all of our resources to increase our children's education opportunities? First of all, congratulations, and thank you for asking that question. The ability to have pre-K for SA Now was as a result of a law that I authored now almost 12 years ago. It was called Better Jobs Act. And what it did was to empower local communities to look at the, the human infrastructure. You know that our cities and our local governments are all about the bricks and the mortar, the concrete, and that's greatly needed. But we knew that cities and local communities wanted to not just invest in capital infrastructure, but invest in our students. And so the Better Jobs Act, which I authored and passed, allowed cities to use that money for early childhood education, for after school mentoring, for dropout recovery, for long term training for adults who had not gotten to the level of their high school diploma. And it lets our community do that. We know the science is solid, that the learning pathways, those neural pathways of three and four year olds are firing, and it's wonderful to have that program. I probably would have tried to maximize our state's dollars, and unfortunately, those budgets were cut. But we need to make sure that we work in conjunction with our school districts already and with the great private early childhood providers so that they can reach the quality level. I'm a supporter of pre-K for SA. You get more bang for the buck. Thanks. Next question is for Raymond Savala. Okay. If the open carry if the open carry bill does pass and allow open carry to be legalized, what will happen to the safety of this campus will there, and will there be any increase or decrease in safety? Would you please be so kind as to repeat it one more time, please? Okay. Let me see. If the open carry bill does pass and allow open carry to be legalized, will what will happen to the safety of this campus? Will there be an increase or decrease in safety? Open carry and handguns. I would like for you all to know that I'm all for open carry because it's gonna deter the criminal from harming those most vulnerable. Now as far as open carry, there comes a huge amount of responsibility with that. Self-restraint, self-discipline, and more than that, the safety of others before your own. So, I, in my opinion, a lot of law enforcement would not approve of that. In the past, we've had that, and in other cities, there, there is an open carry. But as far as I'm, 
I feel safety would be improved. You wouldn't have somebody uh, going off the, uh, should we say, the deep end and harming anybody because the others would be there to stop him or stop her, whichever the individual would be. Uh, I know some of you may not agree on that, but until you've been in a situation where your safety or the safety of your loved ones is concerned, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Thank you. Hello. Okay, the next question is for Alan Reese. As mayor, what would be your views on suburban sprawl as it pertains to nature and trying to conserve natural spaces? Suburban sprawl. I've lived in Houston. I've lived in Dallas, so I know what that can do. One of the first things I would do is because two of these candidates, one is from Tacoma, Washington, one is from New York. And when I was up in Des Moines, Iowa, when you drive along the road, you would see license plate that says poke or something on it. But those cars that are coming in here, that's taking your resources, all that, they should be penalized for driving their cars in here and taking our resources and going back over to Guadalupe County. And with subways like they have in New York or the Sounder like they have in Tacoma, Washington, let them keep their cars over there and let them make a choice whether they're going to live here, pay taxes here, or pay very high parking fees for coming here and taking our money and our resources back to where they live. And I can promise you that when you start thinking long term like they did in New York, those buildings and skyscrapers in Times Square didn't go up overnight. You had to put the infrastructure underground so the buildings can go up this way. So what I'm telling you right now is we first have to get it is insanity to keep building roads wider and wider and wider. If you plant orange trees along the outside, we have a choice. If we have a hurricane, you cut down all them orange trees, we ain't gonna have nothing to eat. Next question, next question is for Gerard Ponce. Okay. With housing costs going up and hourly wages and salaries for the most part staying the same, what, be, what would be your take on modifying local policies to help San Antonio families be able to afford the rising cost of housing. Can, can you repeat that, please? <clears throat> With housing costs going up and hourly, hourly wages and salaries from the most part staying the same, what would be, the, be your take on modifying local policies to make San Antonio families be able to afford the rising cost of housing? Okay. I believe that the people here in San Antonio um, should be allowed to, if they, um, like people on food stamps, you know, I believe that people on food stamps should actually be given community service hours. I'm a big believer in community service, like helping for people to empower their lives. But I believe that maybe if we would have a program where people could actually be like doing community services, like helping to, you know, teach, be assistant teachers in schools or helping like at the VA hospital, to like um, assist veterans that are like in special needs. So I believe that we might be able to, if possible, give a credit to those people to have to help pay for their homes um, by doing community service in the city. So they are not just like being given like a donation to um, pay for their homes, but to be able to like help sustain themselves by giving back to the community. Thank you. The next question is for Cynthia Cavazos. Is our reputation as a green city worth conserving water and keeping water from people who need it to survive? Water. <laughs> okay. Um, 
San, our San Antonio water system, they, of course, you know, they, they, deal, they deal with clean water, or we're trying to get the water, or they're trying to get the water a lot cleaner. Um, there's a lot of different things that they can do to keep that water clean, but if they can go and, I'm going to use a medical word, um, oh, it's where you boil the water, uh, I forgot that word, but they would go and sanitize the water more and have it towards where it would be more edible for us so we don't get all them bleach smells coming out of the water, it would benefit everybody. Right now they have what's called pens. Um, I think it's a new thing that they came up with. Um, it filters the water and it takes out all that toilet paper stuff out. So they're really doing all that other stuff in there. What was the rest of the question toward the end? I'm sorry. Um, uh, should we be keeping water uh, from people who need it to survive? Keeping the water from people, I don't think we should do that. Um, but then we all we only take care of the San Antonio area anyway, don't we? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Well, um, I know that they went out to other countries, I mean, to other cities or other little towns around San Antonio to find water. And that's a good idea, but they still need to be able to come up with cleaning the water better. Yeah. Next question is for Tommy Atkinson. And Ms. Rathkinson, uh, when you're done, if you would remain at the podium for the closing statement. Okay. 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 What kinds of things do you plan to do f to encourage start encourage college students to stay in school? Encourage what? College student college students to stay in school. Well, I think for one thing, our cost of living is is important to the college students, and I think uh, staying in school requires uh, uh, the ability to afford staying in school. And from what I have seen and, and, and understood, the state of Texas has allowed uh, college co costs to rise. And I think that we ought to be in Austin trying to make sure that we keep costs at a reasonable level and still fund our schools. Uh, our county actually stepped up to the plate several instances to help the state finance our roadways, which are, are extremely crowded, as all of you know, and I think that what we can do is make sure the economics works for these college students and that they don't have uh, two or three hundred thousand dollar debt owing when they walk across the stage to grab their diploma and go out and hit, hit the workforce. So I would, I would recommend that we be an advocate and that we uh, do whatever we can to get the state to properly finance our colleges and be, an, be an, uh, a liaison in that regard. We're just 87 miles from the state capitol, so it's, a, it's a, you know, a pretty easy deal for us. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Atkinson. Okay, that concludes our round of student questions. Um, uh, I want to go ahead and take a, a brief time out, folks. We're, we're at 310 uh, right now, and I know that some classes uh, are here until 315. Some folks have to uh, go to 3.30 classes. Uh, we're just about to begin our round of closing statements. This uh, will only take 18 minutes, so if you can stick around, please do stick around. Uh, but I, I want to avoid any interruptions of, of people who have to walk out because they've got to go to their next class. Um, so uh, this next round uh, will go uh, in the uh, original order, um, uh, starting with Mr. Adkinson, uh, and then each candidate will give a two-minute closing statement. Oh, uh, also students, uh, I know some of you were offered extra credit uh, to come here today. Uh, you should find sign-up sheets uh, uh, with the student volunteers out in the foyer area. Uh, here's a sign-up sheet down here uh, in the front as well, so uh, make sure that you get your name on there if you uh, want that extra credit. And we'll begin uh, the final closing statements here in about 30 seconds as, as these folks filter out. Chanter, mm -hmm. ne donne pas 
plaît prix de sa vieille cité Près de Notre-Dame Parfois couvre un trame Oui mais à Paname Tout peut s'arranger Quelques rayons du ciel d'été L'accordéon de marinier Hello all right, folks, we're about to begin our closing round, so if you uh, do intend to leave the auditorium, please go ahead and exit quickly so we can begin this final round of closing statements. Uh, maybe perhaps take the sign-up out sheet out into the foyer, um, and that way it won't be an interruption. Okay, but please take the sign-up sheet, sign sheet in, out into the foyer. Thank you. Okay, we'll now begin our final round of two-minute closing statements. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to th thank Greg, Craig Corneas for your excellent work and all of your uh, help to make sure that we have a forum like this, the, the Department of, of, of Humanities that uh, is involved in this, UTSA, and all of the students who are here. This is where I got my start. At the, at the college level with then state senator, then instructor Frank Madler, who became state senator, uh, finding out uh, what we could do to change the world for the better that we were born into. That's what excited me, having a chance to have a role in the destiny of my community, not just being a, a, a passive bystander, uh, bystander. I'm running for mayor because I think we need to get back to basics. I think that we have some fundamental issues that could be solved with a stay-at-home mayor, one of which would be the fire and police contract, a second of which would be the Uber Lyft contract, and the back and forthness that we see going on, the inability to resolve an issue once and for all and move on to the other things. And those other things are the basics, infrastructure, streets, drainage, animal care services, code compliance, uh, curbs of you know just fundamental basic things uh, of uh, making sure that we can grow our small businesses making sure that we have opportunity waiting for these students when they get out my wife Karen and I were born and raised here in San Antonio I went to St. Gerard High Schools as did she many years after me uh, we then went to Sac St. Phillips I went to St. Mary's for a while and then on to UT Austin and then uh, finally to South Texas College of Law I came back and worked for Ted Butler in the district attorney's office where I saw all the elements, all the aspects of crime. I think we need a safe community. Back to basics. Let's get the work done here and work with everybody else who's doing other things in, in our lives. Thank you so much. Cynthia Cavazos. Cynthia Cavazos. Again, my name is Cynthia Cavazos, and the reason why um, I'm running for mayor is because the city needs a balanced budget. Without that balanced budget, um, city, the city would still be the same. Uh, changing the infrastructure, medical reform, child care, homelessness, that additional tax for education only. Education and safety is what I plan to do. Gerard Ponce. Thank you all again for being here. I mean, for letting us be here with you all again today. Um, I'm running for mayor because I believe there needs to be a change here in the city. There needs to be a team, and I'm a team player. I believe that we need to have the citizens here in the city, um, and of course, y'all be involved as a team, like with the, the citizens, people with money, and our city government. Um, I don't believe that we've had a team here in San Antonio for years, and it's time that that happens. I, be my, with, because of my experience, I think I would be very good as a mayor. I was one of two people who created the juvenile justice system here in San Antonio, which is, that was about 30 years ago, which has now become a huge system in itself with about four judges and probably about 100 probation officers helping children to help change their lives around. Later, I was one of three people who created the, 
who helped to put together the domestic violence courts here in San Antonio, again, helping, to put, helping people to change their lives, empower themselves. That court system became a model for Texas and has been used throughout the nation also. So I'm very proud of that, um, being one of the people that were responsible for putting that together. I was on the committee to create the DWI task force here, which about 30 years ago. Um, so I've actually have done things that have been proven, have been, have been implemented and have lasted over 30 years and all about helping people with, um, to change and empower their lives. So I believe that me as a mayor would, um, I would try to encourage people to get involved with the city, with, with their government to make sure that the decision is not made by just the council, but by the voices of the people also. Thank you. Alan Reese. I would like to first apologize because when I went to Louisiana Tech, I used to be a student officer. One day I was out there and somebody didn't have a tag on the back of their car, so I went around to the front and started writing her VIN number down, and all of a sudden this lady runs over my foot. So, SO50, what's going on? Someone just ran over my foot. So. From that day forward, I started writing 50 tickets a day because I was mad at everybody on that campus. So I promise you, I ride the bus now. But some of these rich people in Mercedes and BMW that want to drive, they're going to get a whole lot of parking tickets. Raymond Savala. Thank all of you for your time and your patience. Um, I believe that I am the best qualified person. I'm a retired non-commissioned officer. I've served in the Army, Navy, and Air Force. So I know how to interact with different groups, different departments, and how to get things done. Unfortunately, I was on my way to OCS when the government ran out of money and I never made it to OCS or I would have been a commissioned officer. But that being said, my heart is here in San Antonio. Currently, we have leadership problems. Right now, I keep asking city council, do the wants of the few outweigh the needs of the many? And they've remained silent. Why? Because they're doing that. I will change that and I will hold everyone accountable Furthermore, this wasteful distribution of money will cease, where we have more money for other groups to receive, not just the chosen. For example, um, Haven for Hope. I'm very compassionate. But you know what? Rapid City, South Dakota has the same thing. They have no funding or receive no funding from the city, and yet they have a five-acre, three-building uh, successful shelter. Why can't we have it here? They received 2.5 million. That's matched by the state and the federal government. Where's that money going? Why do we have to pay a cleaning staff? Why can't the residents do it? Rapid City leads by example. San Antonio should follow that guide. Thank you. Letizia Vanderpuy. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here with you this afternoon. As I look out at the audience, and many of the students have had to return, I am in amazement and in awe. I started as well at Alamo Colleges, and four of our six children have used the Alamo Colleges for their education. But what I see here today are people who are in San Antonio, and you're not just concerned about a job. You want a career. So you need leadership at City Hall that understands that when you have a city that works to the benefit of all of its citizens, of all of its proud neighborhoods, 
to make sure that we're not just that tagline of Military City USA, but we are indeed Veteran City USA. We've got to be more than just a pretty skyline. And I know, as the mother of six ages from 25 to 34, those of you that aren't, you define success very differently. Your definition of success maybe is different from my generation, which came here with a slide roll, by the way. You want to live a life of significance of value, making sure that your choices in where you live and what you do is valued by the greater community. That's the city that we can be. That's the mayor that I know I can work with council to make sure we're on that path forward. Stay fiscally sound, take care of our infrastructure, make sure we've got the workforce of the future to attract the type of businesses so that our students, our folks, find the opportunity and their dreams right here in San Antonio. My name is Leticia Vandepute. Please go on our website, Leticia for Mayor. I'd be honored to have your support. Gracias. Cynthia Brand. I didn't tell you what my background was. But I do want you to know this. <clears throat> I'm a 10th generation San Antonian. My grandfather, in 1731, was actually the first mayor of San Antonio. His home was on Dolorosa, where the Bear County Courthouse is at. I've always been active in politics all my life, but behind the scenes. I'm a military family member. My husband is currently in Afghanistan. As a military family member, Guess what? You're going to get a quick education on what it takes to be an administrator. They put you in key positions. I've had several different positions from president, vice president, special events coordinator, chairman. I'm a mover and a shaker. I get things done. I've established charities on a federal installation that are still in existence today that the San Antonio Angels modeled after my program that I did at Fort Hood. I'm not here to toot my horn. I'm here to tell you I represent each one of you. I have seven different ethnicities in me. So I represent you. I am your voice. I want to be your voice. And it's going to take someone like me to step into City Hall and straighten out the entire mess, create transparency, and create that foundation of trust that we need in our city government to be accountable to you, to answer to you, that is exactly what you have entrusted us for, is that kind of leadership. That's what I offer you. It is in your hands. You decide. You decide who you want for your next mayor. You make the choice. But on May 9th, vote for Cynthia Brim. Thank you. Paul Martinez. Again, I do want to thank you for inviting me to the Northwest Vista College campus and to the forum. I'm, again, like I said, I'm very pleased to see so many of our young you know, generation getting into politics and actually coming out to listen to the candidates speak. You know, running for mayor is not an easy thing. Uh, trust me, I'm, I'm running for mayor. Um, but the bottom line is I tell people all the time, I'm not a career politician. What I am is a career leader. I'm running for mayor because I am sick and tired of career politicians always saying the exact same thing. Vote for me and I'm gonna be your voice. And the minute they get into office, they forget about we the people and they become the voice of we a special interest group, we a political party, we a political agenda. When I retired in 2013, I came home to find that in our city. We were being used, our, our education system was being used to push a political agenda our infrastructure was not growing as fast as our city was. Our taxpayers' dollars were being wasted and abused. Contracts weren't going out fairly. They were going to friends of the council, to friends of the chamber. And so I said, not anymore. It's time that we, the people, have a voice. Somebody who's going to listen to what everybody has to say, regardless of political affiliation. From the highest-ranking person to the lowest-ranking private, as we used to say in the Army. 
you all have a voice. And it's time that your voice is heard. But in order for you to do that, you have to stop electing career politicians and you have to start electing career leaders. But more importantly than that, you have to get out and vote. I guarantee you that your vote's gonna count. The choice is yours. Make it the right one. Thank you. Mike Villarreal. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to join you today. It is refreshing to look out in the audience and see the young faces of San Antonio. You, you do represent the future of San Antonio that we are trying to realize for the larger city. You represent the next generation of leaders that I want launching your careers here in San Antonio, starting small businesses. Let me tell you, for the last nine months, I've been sitting with fellow San Antonians, listening to their dreams and their hopes. I've been pursuing one single office with one single goal, and that is to make our city a city of opportunity so that you can launch your careers and start your businesses and raise your families here. To make that happen, we need a mayor who is forward-looking, who embraces innovation and technology in public policy. We need a mayor who is going to completely govern in a nonpartisan way. We can't divide our city along party lines or parts of town if we expect to realize the prosperity we hope for our city and our families. Here's what you can expect from me. Number one, I'm gonna be focused on building our economy, strengthening it, diversifying it. We have emerging sectors in cybersecurity, information technology, healthcare biosciences, and automotive and aerospace manufacturing. These sectors need to be strengthened. How? By strengthening our workforce. For me, economic development is going to be about workforce development helping build a talent pipeline from the earliest grades into these sectors. Thank you very much for your time. All right, and that concludes our forum. Please, let's give the candidates a big round of applause. And I also thank all the students for coming out here today. Again, you can go to the college Facebook page and find a link in about five minutes, and uh, you can share a, a webcast of this forum with your friends. Thank you all, and have a wonderful afternoon.